this occurred in Henry County, Kentucky on a Highway 146 between Pendleton and Newcastle, Kentucky, around, oh, I want to say like 6.40 in the morning. I'd already taken my wife to work, and I was on my way back. And usually I have my son with me, but that, that morning I didn't have him with me. And I, I guess I'm thankful for that because it literally made me jump in the seat. And, I mean, that's weird for me. I'm a big guy. And, I mean, to literally think that I actually came loose from the seat was still driving the truck is kind of strange. But, I mean, coming to 146, they got it under construction. I mean, it's two lanes. They've got barrels off to the side. And it's the big round barrels. I was thinking for some reason after the fact, I guess it's how jumbled it made me. It's still like there was slender, slender cones, but it was like big barrel cones, reflective, you know. But anyway, I'm coming down through there, and it's still dark, so there's a car coming from the other way. And we're still quite a distance apart from each other, probably maybe a 1,000 feet apart. And they dimmed their lights. I dimmed mine. and But I keep seeing something on the side that I'm traveling towards Newcastle, I can see something through the lights like it's catching on the reflective of the barrel. I can see the whole barrel or partial of the barrel and it's just kind of fading in and out so I can tell it's something moving but I just can't tell what it is. I figure it's deer like standing waiting to leap out or something and I keep slowing down, slowing down and then when I get like right there at it I see it and I can't believe my eyes. I couldn't actually by that time I couldn't actually tell you how much I completely slowed the vehicle down because originally I was doing probably 45, 50 miles an hour anyway on the highway. And like I say, I see it, it looks like to me, what I see, it looks like a, it's solid black, it's massive, it's right by the side of the road, and it looks like it's leaning over. I don't know how to describe that. It's, it's not, not squatted down, it's like it's leaning over. And it's like it, for a brief second, it's like we made eye contact. And like when I first saw it, like say I'm driving the truck and I literally felt my body leap up, out, leap up out of the seat, like feet and everything moved from where I was at behind the wheel. And I don't, I didn't, don't remember like trying to swerve or anything like that, but it freaked me out so much that I literally wanted to drive on the other side of the road. That's how bad it scared me. And I'm like, say I'm a big guy. I'm, Six three, six four, three hundred pounds or close to it, and I just it usually nothing that scares me like that. And way it scared me, but it was what I could see of the face. It just looked like a gorilla's face, and it just looked like it was PO'd for no apparent reason. I mean, it wasn't like it was an eye shine picked up or anything. It's just the movement that I could see alongside the road in front of the construction barrels that made me look over there and really want to slow down and. I mean, at the time, after seeing it, I didn't have it. I mean, I'm, I'm all big about the reading the stories, eyewitness testimony, and hearing all that, seeing all that. And I'm kind of, you know, usually got my own opinion while somebody's giving a description of something. And I had no desire to turn the truck around and go back and look and see what I saw. I had no desire. I just wanted to go on. I didn't, you know, which, like I say, it was dark. There was no reason to try to look in the mirror. I wasn't going to see anything. But I come home. And, of course, I waited till daylight to do this. I got up there and standing next to the truck. And the truck that I was driving was the F-150. I mean, it's got bigger than stock-sized tires, but it's not like massive mud swampers or anything like that on it. I'm standing next to the truck, and I'm as tall as the cab on the truck. And what I saw was above the cab, well above the cab, but it was like it was leaning over. It's kind of like it was standing back. The only way I could describe it is like it would be standing back away from the road a little bit and leaning down to be more eye level with whatever was coming through the windshield or looking at the windshield. And the only thing I can describe it as is like a gorilla space and it's like it was PO'd. But then, I mean, the more I thought about it later on is, you know, it's like say it's 640 in the morning. It's not foggy. It's It's still dark. It's, you know, it's dark enough that you need the headlights and everything like that. It's not like you could be able to just to see without headlights. You'd be able to see somebody out there standing or walking or anything like that. It was, it was dark enough for that. And it was this Sunday morning just past, which was March 17th, I guess. Yeah, 17th. And I, I honestly, I mean, 
I had come home and I texted my wife about it. And I mean, I was all over the place. I couldn't focus on playing like a little game on my phone. I couldn't focus on watching TV. I guess it was the adrenaline. I don't know. But, you know, I'd actually sent you the thing on uh, Messenger and I texted my wife and I sent a message to you about it. And I said, but I just couldn't come to tell on our, you know, our son or whatever. And she's like, well, you could was able to tell, you know, somebody you just know through, you know, what you saw on uh, Kentucky Bigfoot and stuff like that. And you and him had texted a few times, but, you know, really you don't know him. Kind of like you let a stranger know, but you can't let our son know. So when I went to tell my son what I saw, I mean, I got choked up. I felt real bad, and I apologized to him right then and there. I was like, <clears throat> I haven't believed a lot of times what you said. You've seen something. I was like, but I want to apologize for that ahead of time. And, I mean, I was almost crying saying that to him. And then I told him what I saw and everything. And then the first thing he asked me, and he he sounded like you when he said it, was there any eye shine? And I'm like, really? I mean, I just, you know, I really didn't see an eye shine. But it had very large eyes. I'm trying to describe what how would I, how big the eyes were. I mean, they were like, looked like the size of lemons. Each eye was that tall. And broadness width wise i would put it at i want to say ballpark from just what i can remember from it probably a five to six wide five to six foot wide or something i don't know i'm I'm probably exaggerating highly on that but i'm just going by what i can remember i do remember when the headlights had hit on it that there was like some parts of it shiny some parts not it's like the hair was like had a a shine to it but it was just black hair and it was long and like say it looked like a gorilla's face but then that you know later on thinking about it on a i have seen it before on there it was like weird trail cam photos and i just remember it from one of them that it's like a somebody's got it on a trail camera that's up in a tree facing down and you can see something walking along and it's the last second it looks up and it, the trail camera gets it i guess it's a, like a video and then they did a still shot of it but you can yeah. see the face. It's not a. It's kind of looks a little more like a, a hard, worn, weathered face. But it's still. It's it's not covered with hair or something like that. But you can tell it's a face. But I don't know. It's it's. It, it, I guess the closest thing I could compare it to is how you would see it in the older the older style movie, uh, Planet of the Apes, of how the the wornness on the face would be. All right. And it was solid black, and like I say, there was it wasn't raining, it wasn't foggy, it wasn't like misting or anything like that. And I don't know. I mean, that's I, I drove by there later on because I had said I would like to go out there and look for tracks. It's construction. I was thinking it was dirt alongside the road, but that's all gravel, so I don't think he would be able to find any tracks or anything. Mm-hmm. I know, I know the picture you're talking about. I've seen the picture online of the looks like a gorilla looking up at the camera, kind of like a, a black and white type image, and it's just the face looking straight up at the camera. I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, it's one of those ones. I, I, I saw it years. I well, I can't remember how long ago I saw it on YouTube, but. You know, I mean, I'm the, I believe I had messaged you before about when I lived in Anderson County about the, you know, hearing the, somebody making the whistling noises and thought it was my brother-in-law and stuff like that that lived across the way. And it would just, you know, it would whistle and then I would whistle back. But the what whistled back at me was like a pure, I don't know how you would say it. It would be like somebody that was just a professional whistler, I guess. They could do a hold of, almost like a, a whistle, but one, one note or something like it and not change it in pitch or anything. It was just like a perfect pure whistle. I guess I, I guess you would almost call it computer generated stuff like that. But you know, after that, and then uh, I don't know. It was my uh, well, at the time it was my wife, her nephew, her two nephews and nieces and stuff like that were back on the property, the big farm or whatever, you know, close to where I lived and. They were talking about seeing something, but, you know, the older, the one boy's brother, older brother, swore up and down it was a deer or whatever. And, but the way he was describing it to me, the, where that they saw was down a, you know, it was a, 
it had to be standing at a lower point, but it was still up pretty high. They could see it. And then I started looking up stuff for, you know, Bigfoot sightings and stuff. And then I found all the ones for Anderson County, Kentucky. And then I started reading all the different reports and stuff. And pretty much since then, I've been – anything that I see on there, on YouTube or uh, Facebook or anything like that, I listen to all the reports and stuff, the eyewitness testimony and stuff, and which it does. It puts a whole nother light on it out of somebody's own words because you can kind of – you can tell it, you know, the, the e- uneasiness in their voice and stuff like that when they're giving descriptions of things and, you know, and hear it from their point of view versus – just reading it in a report. Yeah, that's that's why I like to record these, either audio or video, so people can hear the emotion, they can hear the actual person tell the story in their words. Uh, so it's, it makes more of an impact. And I think, honestly, more people come forward now because they hear these people talk who are not afraid to go on camera now and we're getting more and more reports uh, yeah. because there's no stigma, you know, anymore. People are comfortable sharing what they saw. Well, and I mean, in that area where it occurred at and stuff like that, it's, you know, it's not like that. I mean, there's plenty of deer around. There's plenty of turkey, plenty of wildlife. And from where it happened at versus like uh, what I'm saying, well, I'd say as the crow flies, Lake Jericho, is not probably four miles from there as the crow flies mm-hmm. straight across the woods. Mm-hmm. And, but you know, you got a lot of farms, a lot of wooded acreage and stuff around there. So, yeah. you know, a lot of times people were like, well, you know, I don't understand it. Why, you know, if it's a creature this big, it would be easy to find, easy to see. No, not necessarily. I mean, they're, they, they've been, you know, they've been around since the Native American times and stuff like that. And, <clears throat> have been around that long and not a lot of people but then like you say a lot of people see them and you know until they hear other people giving like a testimony about it or something like that they've been scared to open their mouth because i really didn't know how to text it to my wife and tell her what i saw and then you know i I, even after texting it to her and stuff like that i told her i keep telling her i felt like a complete dumbass for saying something but you know pardon my language but it just did it just but i thought you know other times if you know other people be like scared of saying something to somebody because of fear of ridicule and stuff like that. Yeah. I've never been like that, but then you know after that experience, it just it's a completely different story. It's you know it changes your whole how you react to things. I don't know yeah. how to describe it otherwise. I mean, it kind of humbles you a whole lot because you think about all these other people who'd be like, well, they were scared to say anything to anybody. And you're kind of like, oh, well, why would you be scared? But then. After what happened to me, yeah, but it's between you, what I anonymously posted, which I know the admins see it and stuff like that, but Kentucky Bigfoot Research Organization had actually sent me a thing on Messenger that they would like to contact me to talk to me yesterday. And that was my wife. (laughs) My wife sent that. Well, and I had actually put the number on there, but then – at the begin with, I didn't really, I said, that, you know, I'd have to do it at a later time, but because I was actually traveled over into Trimble County, and I, I know how crappy the cell service is over in there because you got a lot of hills and stuff, and I didn't want to be talking to somebody on the phone, and then it cut out, and then, you know, lose the call completely, and then have a hard time anybody getting a hold of you again, so, but the word I'd put on there anonymously on the post on Kentucky Bigfoot Research Organization about, about well, did you know that I've taken other re- reports by Lake Jericho? Did you know about the the three Bigfoot reports that are near uh, Pendleton, uh, near Lake Jericho? No, I, you know I don't. No, I didn't. I know that there was reports from back years ago in Henry County, like around Six Mile Creek and stuff like that. With Six Mile Creek down there, I promise you, if there ain't a Bigfoot down there living, he ain't going to live nowhere. Because, I mean, well, of how overgrown it is, there's a lot of farms down there, stuff like that. And then back when I was probably 18, 19 years old, they, somebody had released a lot of wild hogs. Released some hogs, and there's a lot of wild hogs running around. So it's just, you know, more food supply. Yeah, it's a good area. 
um, I've documented three reports right in that area. So you're close by. In fact, is what I love to do, my brother and my son live not far from, from you over there in Oldham, Oldham County, um, you know, near, in Goshen. And I'm, maybe I can contact one of them to go meet you, you know, at that location and let them, you know, you're welcome to join them, look for tracks. Would that be okay? No, I ain't got a problem with that. I mean, just what I drove around along there and looked. I just saw the gravel and stuff, and like say they're, I don't know if they're making the road wider or turning it into four lanes or what they're doing because it's the original road and then they come in and put another temporary road in, but they're still working on the old road. I don't know if they're expanding it out and stuff. As of right now, it's just like gravel and stuff there, but I don't know how hard they got it packed down. I mean, I, this afternoon, me, my wife, and son come by there, and I told my wife, I said, I can't even look there because the place where I saw it at. I, I mean, even though it was broad daylight, I can't look at that place. I looked at the other side of the road, down over the hill or whatever, did not want to look that way. And, I mean, that's kind of weird for me to say. Like, say, I'm I'm all outdoorsy and stuff, and even when I was talking to my son about this, I told him, I said, you know, I said, from guns that I've got that was my dad's, like 12 gauges with deer slugs and stuff like that, I said, to think of what I saw and the firepower that I know that, you know, my dad had and thinking of the different guns and stuff. I said, I can imagine people seeing these through a scope, even from a distance away with a high powered rifle and not want to take a shot for one, it being human and for two, pretty much knowing that it probably wouldn't stop it. And just from what I saw, I couldn't think of anything that would even, to me, if you shot it with anything, you just pretty much, you're going to piss it off. And you're probably going to wind up wearing that gun someplace you don't want to wear it at. <laughs> you know, if it, if it came to that point. But, I mean, like I told my son, I said, I know what a 12-gauge deer slug looks like. And I said, I promise you, I said, to me, you even shot it with something like that. I said, even at close range, I said, you're just going to make it mad. Because, like I told him, I said, it's harder to go through muscle mass than it is, you know, something that's like a lot of fatty tissue or something like that. I said, muscle is thick and solid. You can't penetrate it as easy as you think you can. And, you know, I've listened to a lot of the reports, like the one guy was in the military that was on the deathbed confession, and he was talking about him and, you know, the other guys doing the shooting at it on Fort Knox and talking about the the mama, the female or whatever, it it was just like she was eating the shells, absorbing the shells and still coming. I mean, that just kind of gives you, you know, but then again, you know, she's it's for her family too, so she's going to do what she has to do to protect her family. Yeah. So. But yeah, I wouldn't have a problem with that. I mean, I work, I actually work in Clarksville, and I work from 7 to 3.30. That's what they've had our hours there for a long time. And I mean, my cell number, you can feel free to give it to him. But I mean, just even if he's to, you know, call me or something like that and he goes to my voicemail, if he could just leave me a message, that's what be the the big deal is, you know, because it'll leave me a voicemail for that number. All right. Can he text uh, you? Yeah, he can text me too. And, you know, I, it'll the text and stuff like that will come through. Because see, a while ago you said you were going to text me, and then where you said you was going to text me, I kept waiting for a regular text, and then I didn't get anything. And then I'm like, well, crap. You know, is it blocking his text now on him? Yeah. Realize it was going to come through the messenger one. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll reach reach out to him and see maybe he can meet you, uh, my son. Uh, and do you do you remember exactly where it was? Yeah, I mean I know the exact spot, and I mean there as from that road from there's a house, not even I want to say sixty yards from that. That's kind of down. This was like a temporary road they put in and going toward where the house would be would be like going down toward what used to be the original road that they've torn out now and they're redoing it or whatever. But 60 yards from that is a house, which there's houses on the other side of the road. Now, there was a car, like I say, that was coming towards me. Now, whether they saw it or not, they may have. 
But then again, they may not have noticed. I don't know. It's just the way I was coming to where it was standing there, moving around, whatever it was doing, was the barrel was on the other side. The barrels were on the other side of it. So I kept seeing the, the headlights, like where they'd be shining on the barrels and it was reflecting back. You could see like the barrel, the reflectiveness of it, and then part of it disappear and then it would reappear, kind of like how a deer would be between, like, say, or it wouldn't have to be a deer. It could be anything between, say, uh, you and a light that says a backdrop or whatever reflecting the light back and you can see something breaking up the light but you can't tell what it is till you get closer I mean so I just I was wondering you said you slowed down do you know like how slow like almost to a stop or how fast were you going when you went by it I want to say I probably was doing I don't remember looking at the spinometer or how fast I was going exactly, but I know to begin with approaching that where I'd already seen the other car coming, I was probably doing 45 or 50 then, but it had to be for, I want to say I probably wouldn't even probably doing 10 or 15 by then because, you know, I mean, I know you had had an issue before that your truck got hit by a deer or something like that, or, you know, you wound up catching a deer with your truck seems like no matter how much you slow down, if they're going to come out there, they're going to come out come out there in front of you. You could be, like, doing two miles an hour, and they'll come out in front of you. Yeah. So I may have slowed down all the way to almost either a dead stop or five to ten miles an hour or something like it. But, I mean, I got a real, real good look at it, I mean, of what I could see. And like I say, there was some parts of it that was shiny and some parts that wasn't. It was almost like it was either – the hair almost like it had well, something would have like a, I don't know whether you would say it was wet. I couldn't tell whether it was wet or what it was, but it, some of it kind of like shined up on the lights. The headlights hit on it, shined up some, and some of it didn't. Was it on your side, the driver's side, or, or was it on the passenger side? It was on the passenger side because I basically approached it, and it was on the passenger side of the road. And right where the barrels are is like right off the road. I mean, you... If I would have been in the passenger seat and somebody else had been driving, I believe I would have put the window down and probably reach out and put my hand on it. Not that I wanted to, but, you know, I probably could. Okay. So it's cl- very close to the car, truck. Yeah. And then how, and like much, say, how much of the creature did you see? Like, did you see the arms, the hands, the feet, legs? What, what do you remember seeing of the creature? What I remember seeing... I mean, I I guess I mainly focused on what I could see was, and it was like it was, I don't know how you'd say, it was like it would be, like say somebody standing on the side of the road and they would just say they was going to lean out to talk to somebody in a vehicle. They yeah. stopped and they over to talk to you. I saw for what it was doing, it was leaning over, like leaning out toward the road. But because to begin with, I thought it was like right at the edge of the road. But the way it had leaned out or down or however you want to say and I like to say, I know the truck's like a good, the top of the cab would be about 6'5 or something like that because it's about my height. But it's what it was doing. It was like it was maybe standing back from the road a little bit, but leaned over to kind of like, I don't know how you would say it. It would be like somebody leaning over to a truck to, if they were standing beside it, to lean over to talk to somebody, lay their arms up by the window, talking to somebody where they would be real tall and it would be leaning down to talk to you. You you made eye contact with it through the windshield. Yeah, it's like it locked. I mean, it's like it was looking right dead at me, almost like it knew. I don't know how you would say it. It's like it, it knew there was only one person in the vehicle, and it looked right dead at me. And we locked eyes for a minute, or, well, probably wasn't a minute, but, I mean, locked eyes, and it looked at me. And that's why I said it looked like a pissed-off gorilla is what it looked like. When you say it looked like a gorilla, can you describe the nose? The nose was like, I'm not going to say it, because I looked at gorilla pictures after that. It's, it didn't have the, the nose snout like a gorilla. It was like it was a regular human nose, but it was like it was flattened more against its face. Okay. And the hair around the face. Can you uh, remember what the hair looked like around the face? It was just like long and black and just kind of what I can remember of it was kind of, I don't know, 
it's just you know it's kind of going different directions it wasn't like it was like straight down or it was, i don't know how you describe it i guess you would describe this how somebody's hair would be messed up it just hair just kind of sticking out different places around the face but the face is just it was kind of a like i say it was like that one in, i was talking about in that youtube video it was kind of more of a, a weathered face but it was a, the dark color like the black but it wasn't as like as black as the hair around it if that makes any sense yeah i guess you would be yeah. it would be kind of more like a a worn face where how you see older people sometimes in their skin is like real kind of like sun weathered or something like that and you said it looked it looked po'd it looked angry but how it was why, like what makes what makes you think it looked angry because it was like his face was tensed like it was like how you would i don't know how you would like if you was going to look at somebody angry and you like tensed your face up and your brows kind of raised some because the way it did is i mean i could see like the where the brow was but it was like the brow was sticking out more where it came down the forehead down the brow was like sticking out more it's kind of like the eyes would recess back a little bit or i guess the way it was making the face or whatever i don't know it, it, maybe there were deer approaching or something and i may have you know or because the truck is a little bit loud at least it leaks at the exhaust manifold that's a great design ford created but you know, anyway, i don't know maybe i spooked something it was waiting for or something like that i don't know it just it just seemed like he was mad about it it made a face i didn't see any teeth or anything like that but it's like it's it had its face like drawn up like it was very angry about something you know we have a, a sketch artist terry thomas and he he has done great sketches after speaking to the witness would it be yeah. okay if I, I gave him your name and number and you described the face to him, the way it was standing, and he could do a nice sketch of that? That's fine. I have no problem with it, Charlie. All right. Because I I mean, I went online and was trying to, and that's why I posted that thing on the Kentucky Bigfoot Research Organization. Figure somebody might post something on there that might be close, but the only picture I saw on there, it looked like where somebody would put something on a stick that was just trying to create a what they thought a Bigfoot face would look like. And, I mean, I don't know. I just, that's the closest thing, because the more I thought about it, that's the closest thing I can remember. And I went on YouTube, and I tried to find that video. And it, I know it was like trail cam photos or things called on trail cam photos and stuff like that. And that's like I say, it's the one you said, too. It's like it's walking along, and it looks up like the camera's right above it on the limb. And at the last second, it looks just straight up at it. Yeah. Which you know, and also I, you know, you you see a lot of times the videos and stuff that people's got trail cams out, and you can see something messing with a trail camera, but you never, you might see it like a little bit of a finger or a hand or something like that, but you never see a face. But you know, you would figure an animal creature or something that lives out in the woods like that, their hearing is going to be very very sensitive, and I'm sure every trail camera makes all kind of some kind of little buzzing noise, some kind of another that. We take for granted that if you actually sit there and listen to it, you could probably hear a whole lot of things. If you, like I tell my son all the time, if you shut your mouth and open your ears, you'll hear a whole lot of things. Yeah, you know, yeah, we believe they can, um, you know, sense the EMF from from them. We know other animals can pick up the EMF. Um, we know that for sure. So I'm sure Bigfoot can as well. Uh, plus, they we think they see the IR and such. So, yeah, I mean, we can only guesstimate what they can do and stuff like that. But, I mean, you know, if they're tracking, you know, they track can track an animal by scent, by sight, by, you know what I'm saying, the smell and stuff like that. And I know certain electronics and stuff like that, even, like, I've seen electric fences that you not even be close to it or what you be close to it, you don't really see it, but you can hear it, hear the hum in the electric fence if you really listen for it. Yeah. You get the listening and paying attention. So, Okay, well, let me um, I'll con when I hang up, I'm gonna contact Terry Thomas, and he might, I don't know when he can call you, text you, or call you. Uh, I'll tell him to text you first to set the time, and then you could just describe, you know, how it was standing. You don't gotta tell the whole thing like you told me. Just say you were in your truck, it was standing by the barrel to the right on the, on the you know, passenger side, leaning leaning over towards your truck. It was dark out. 
and then you could describe the face, hair. It, it wouldn't take that long. He just get a good idea of kind of how it was standing there. And then my son, I'll see if he's available. I don't think he's working right now. He's in between jobs, and um, he's kind of new to the research. But at least yeah. boot, somebody that can get out there and take pictures and video of where it was, maybe look for tracks, he might be interested. So I'll I'll have him text you too. Okay, that's fine. Well, oh, thank you, uh, Ed. Um, I appreciate you sharing this and. We're going to do a full follow-up, maybe get a sketch, maybe um, get some video, um, which would be good. Well, I'd like to, time to find one of your uh, – I'd like to one time find one of your uh, programs that's going to be somewhere close to me where I could be able – because I know that one time, one year, you was in the eminence. That was years ago. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to come it. to one. I'd like to see a lot of that stuff, too, and talk well, to you I and don't, everything. Unfortunately, I don't live – I used to live there in Oldham County. I lived I lived right near you there. I lived in um, Goshen for a long time, but now I live over here by the gorge. So I'm not over there, but um, there's some other stuff coming up. Libraries and uh, we're having a big festival here. We just finished talking to the Chamber of Commerce or or city whatever, and September 21st we're planning a Bigfoot festival. With um, myself, Tom Shea, Lyle Blackburn, Don Neal, Turtle Man, of all people, we're, we're going to put together a big festival. And yeah. just watch social media. You'll see lots of posts to that. But that's something you might want to come to because there'll be some really, you know, really good speakers and, you know, live music and town hall. Well, pretty music. much I can find it's even on TV or on well, like TV. It's on like Netflix, Prime. Uh, anything YouTube or anything you put on there about, you know, Bigfoot reports and stuff like it, witness issues and stuff like that, I always go and listen to them and watch them and stuff. And, you know, and different times of stuff that I've heard, you know, while being out in the woods or around me or something like that, that, you know, I can hear something from time to time that I can associate with what somebody else says that, you know, hearing a strange noise, but see, you know how you usually say, was there any kind of smell or anything like that? I didn't notice any kind of a smell or anything at the time. But then again, it could have been, you know, the wind could have been going a different direction. Right. But it was, there was nothing, you know, no, I didn't see any deer ahead of time, but I'm not saying they wouldn't right there. I kind of thought maybe the reason I got the PO to look at me was because maybe I kind of spooked the deer a different way from Maybe it was coming towards it, and it, you know, had was in pursuit of it, and maybe I hindered it from that. I don't know. Yeah, it could be. You know, I was I was just thinking this, and I know we could hopefully you could laugh at it now, and I'm kind of laughing at it, but I was picturing you driving up to it, slowing down. It's still dark out, and if it's leaning over that close to the vehicle and looked at you right through the windshield. Now I know why you said you about jumped out of your seat. Cause that was and I've never – I I mean, you know, I've done some stupid stuff throughout my life, but I have never – I can never think of any time I have ever actually – and I had the seat belt on, but I remember my body coming loose from the seat, and it's like I lifted my whole body up. Yeah. But until you see something like that, you, you know, you could see – somebody could hear me say that and go, well, how would you leap out of your seat like that and then turn around maybe six months later as they're driving down the road and they see something and they literally come up out of the seat. But like I say, well, I've never, I never more, that time after seeing that, I wanted to drive into the other lane even though I knew there was a car coming because I felt safer over there than I did in that lane. Yeah. But is that close, that big, you know, if it wanted to reach out and snatch the truck, it could have, but it would have been pretty much not a damn thing I could have done about it. Yeah, it, it makes sense now because, you know, to see it, you know, make eye contact and have it leaning over, looking at you like that, it, which is a shock. You don't expect to see that. So yeah. I can see it scaring you. I mean, it's real obvious. It'd scare anybody. Well, I'll put it this way. It was quite a while afterwards before I was able to have a bathroom function because I believe it locked everything up on me. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, I mean, it's funny to say that, but 
you you could have it. You know, some people say they something's a lure to scare the poop out of you, but I believe it did it the other way for me because I don't remember going to the bathroom quite some time after that. And I even after I got home and it got daylight, I was still kind of reluctant about going outside, even though it was broad daylight. Because it wasn't you, really that. Yeah, how far from your house is it? Uh, well, I know from Pendleton to my house is five miles exactly, and I was in. I was probably almost halfway home. Oh gosh! And there's That's a creek cool. nearby. Creek actually, that same creek actually comes up past my house. Now, there's been times my son, he's 13 now, he's actually my stepson, but I, he's no, he's pretty much I've been his dad since we, me and his mom have been together. I've been the dad that he's not really had in his life. But you know, the creek's down below our house on our property, and it's not real wide in spots where it sat down there. But he's talked about, you know, seeing something down there at different times. And he's like, he says he sees it down there in the same spot, but he's talking about seeing it at 11 o'clock at night with a moon or no moon. And I'm, I kind of question him because there'll be times he's outside in broad daylight and something will be 20 foot away from him and he doesn't see it, but he's going to spot a Bigfoot from here to down there to the creek. But then, you know, after seeing that, that's why I, first thing I did, I said, I want to apologize to you for when you say you've seen something and I've made jokes about it. I want to apologize for that, and then I proceeded to tell him about what I saw. But I was, you know, I was choking up about it, trying to tell him, and real nervous about talking about it and described it to him and everything like that. But like I say, he was, he sounded like you the first thing he said. Did, did you see eye shine? And I'm like, well, no, Charlie, I didn't. But, you know, thank you for asking, because I kind of made a joke about that, but I kind of really... Like I say, the adrenaline and stuff, pretty much that whole day, and which I've had adrenaline go through my body for, you know, other reasons and stuff, and I couldn't focus on anything. I was just bouncing here and bouncing there, but was also real quite reserved and nervous and, you know, really didn't want to involve myself in too many projects because I couldn't trust myself to stay in one spot. Yeah. It, it sounds like it definitely shook you up. For sure. Oh, it it did. And like I say, I'm not a small guy. I mean, it, and it's usually if there's, you know, I live out in the country anyway, but I've got a dog, and if she starts barking, she may just be barking at neighbor dogs or something like that. But if she starts barking, I go outside looking around with the light and stuff, and I will go out there from time to time and stand in the darkness with no light or anything and just stand there just to try to listen. If there, you know, I have a light with me, but I won't have it on, and I'll just stand there and be real quiet. And after seeing that, I'm kind of debating about going outside and be standing in the dark because our lava has something put its hand on my shoulder. And I really probably don't know about fight or flight at that point. It'd probably just like see if I can melt into the ground, you know, something that large because, you know, I don't know. It's just, it changes your whole, It hum, to me, it honestly, I feel like it humbles you because, you know, you you think of people being a certain size, and then you see something like that, and you're just like, holy crap. How could something this large hide? But, yeah, like I say, there's a lot of woods, and I don't know how big that is over at Lake Jericho, how many acres that is, and I know there's a lot of woods and stuff in there. So there's plenty of places for something to hide, and it can blend in and, you know, truly camouflage itself if it wants to. The biggest thing is if it's not moving, somebody's going to miss it with even with the naked eyes. They're not, you know, really looking for it, having an idea where it's at. Well, it could sit in one spot and be cute. Well, plus if it's traveling at night, because the other Bigfoot reports I've got in that area were all during the night or early, early, early morning or late at night. So I, I think that one over there, based on the reports, it does most of its hunting and moving around at night. And it could cross the field, even with the big field, you know, at night, never be seen. Nobody's really paying attention. So. Well, I mean, and even approaching it, I, you know, I saw something kind of, I guess, ahead of time, saw something dark. But, you know, there's all kinds of construction equipment there. they got big generators there. And then, you know, you go by there for four days in a row and there's nothing in one spot and then you come out there again and they got some kind of piece of equipment sitting there or something that's over the hill, the big arm from the crane or something like that you can see there. So you just, you know, you're, there's so much stuff changing around on that road with the construction going on. 
that could something could be there and you just you know, well maybe it's always been there and I just never noticed it. Right. But you yeah. know and I could yeah, say there was people, a car. Yeah, Go a ahead. lot of people a lot of people could have went by it and never paid attention. You know. Just you just happened to be at the right spot at the right time where it was close enough to see it. Well, and it could have been standing there, even somebody else could have passed by there and it had its, you know, been turned around looking the other way and just stood motionless, which a lot of that's what I hear, you know, you know, people, if somebody out in like Western Kentucky sees one out there, seen something out along the highway there and it stood motionless as she drove by it, approaching it or whatever, the headlights had already hit on it. And somebody's like, well, it could have been a tree. And she's like, well, no, if anybody's driven out in there, they know that the trees have been cut way back away from the highway. There are no trees out by the road. And that's why she knew it had to be something. And, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Well, listen, um, I don't want to keep you anymore tonight, but I'm going to give your number to them, the sketch artist and my son. They'll, I'll have yeah. them text you first to set the time, and then maybe we can get – you know, make this a really good report. We'll put a sketch with it. We'll do a little, maybe a little video afterwards. And um, I really appreciate you sharing this. I, you know, I'm, I want to share it because I, it seemed like a few years ago somebody had made it. Well, it's probably more than a few years ago. I was probably at that time. I think I don't know if I was living in Oldham County or what, but I know that somebody had, they had said something about a Bigfoot then. But you know, it's like everybody else. You say something about seeing something like that, and somebody people just laugh at you because that's been the general nature of most, you know, stuff like that. You know, well, you've been drinking, or you, you know, you was up too late, or something like that. I don't drink and I don't do drugs. You know, and after seeing that, I told my son yesterday. I said, you know what? I said I don't drink, and I'd actually would like a strong drink right about now, but I don't think that would help me any. But you know, yeah. if I thought it would help, I would take it, but. You know, I say stuff like that, but I I don't drink. I and I know taking a drink is not going to change it. I would still, you know, I still remember it. It's just some of those things. Sometimes you see things you you kind of want to block out, but then, like I say, the more I thought about it, I kept going on YouTube and I kept trying to find that, and I couldn't find it because I'd even found a couple of pictures of actual gorillas with angry faces and stuff like that. But the more I looked at them, I'm like, well, this is not it. It's just it's. I kind of find two pictures, and I kind of like, well, it'd be like a cross between these two. And it's hard to describe if somebody else didn't see it. You know, yeah. somebody else could be like, oh, yeah, I could kind of, I remember that. But I'm, you know, my son, I, I figured he would have been with me. I figured he probably would have jumped through the seatbelt and probably latched onto me like a scared cat or something like that. And I probably really would have wrecked the trim. Damn oh, truck, man. I can only imagine yeah. if, you, if you had a passenger like your wife or your son was sitting on that side. Gosh. <laughs> I don't know. I'd probably reach over and probably snatch a hold of them and jerk them over and it's right beside me with the seatbelt on or not. Brought them over to me to, yeah, but like I say, I mean, just from what I can remember, I, it seemed like my, and it's not that big in the cab. It was like, it seemed like my hind end and everything come up off that seat, probably a good foot, foot and a half, what it felt like. And I can still yeah. remember that. I mean, I could, I've never in my life done that. Well, you, ever, and to be honest, I mean, which I like, I like this actually, the way you first started out talking and you said you about jumped out of the seat, I thought you meant more figuratively than literally. But then as you said it a couple of times, you really like almost jumped out of the seat. But then after you painted a picture of how you approached it and how it was leaning over and you you were that close to it, now it makes sense. You know, anybody would have jumped out of their seat. Well, and you figure in a pickup truck, you know, it's not that far. You know, you're sitting in the driver's seat. You reach over to the passenger side. Even if there's not a passenger in the seat, you putting your, can literally put your hand pretty much on the backrest of the passenger seat, and it's not that far across the cab of the truck. That's what I'm saying. It's not, it's not like it's 8, 10 foot across there. You know, from one side to the other, yeah. and you're driving what a a lane that's probably what maybe twelve foot wide. You know, on a yeah. two lane road or something like that. That you know, the the whole lane you're driving in is probably what maybe ten twelve foot wide, and the vehicle fits within those parameters. And then whatever it is is right off the side of the road, so it's really kind of literally <clears throat> up close and personal in a way. You you know, <laughs> you didn't. 
I he didn't expect. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's exciting, and you know, again, thank you, and I'll have um, those people contact you, and then if there's any questions, I'll just text you. Uh, you know, when I'm doing the report, if you don't care. I don't care, Charlie. I, I, you know, I'd like to share this because, like you say, you know, somebody comes forward and says something. Maybe it might help somebody else that, because a lot of the times that's what, you know, what I hear on a lot of the reports and stuff. It happened 10, 15, 20, some of them 30 years ago that they saw this, and you're just hearing about it now because they finally get enough gumption to come forward because they hear somebody else say something. Right. And, you know, yeah, I'm sure I can say I could go probably right up there at the local gas station and say something about seeing something out there along the road, and they'd probably, everybody in there would probably bust out laughing. Oh, yeah. And again, but, now, you know, I will you know, tell you this. Laughing like that, and then they'd be like, you know, it's later on they'd be thinking about it. They'd go home and tell their wife or something, and then the more they think about it, they remember something that happened to them. And then it kind of, you know, maybe I shouldn't have laughed at him because I remember something I saw years ago that I can't explain. Exactly. And those reports that are in that area were less, I'm pretty sure, less than 10 years ago. So you're talking within a decade, which is not that long. I've got, I know right in that same area, almost the same area, three reports from credible witnesses. And then if you go um, for the north into Trimble County, you head up there to Tom Shea's area, where he's got the largest cast collection in the in the state, on one of the largest samples of, in the country, are from Trimble County, and I've got other reports I've documented in Trimble County too, eyewitnesses uh, that seen them. So, you know, the reason this excites me even more so, I know the history of that area, and I know they're there, and I know they're still there. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, and the bad part about it is, I mean, my my stepson, he's from California. You know, he was born in California. Wasn't he born in California, honey? Yeah, but he's been raised in Kentucky. He's been raised in Kentucky, but he's – I'm a country boy. I was born and raised in Henry County. So, I mean, I grew up around here, and it's more and more he's seeing what I, I've been trying to show him about where they're taking these farms, and they're taking farms, and they're turning them into subdivisions and building all these houses and stuff. And, you know, people, when they build these happy subdivisions, they like, look, the deer come to our little subdivision. Well, you know, you need to think about it. It was the deer's home before you ever set foot here, or, you know, generations of deer before it had been here and stuff like that. And he's starting to understand a lot more of that and see that. And that's like, you know, if we're encroaching on their homeland, you're going to see them because they're still going to come around. It's just it's not their same area no more. It is, but it's not. And a lot of people don't understand that, but you know, you're you're trying to encroach in their area and stuff like that's going to happen. You're you're going to see more wildlife than you've seen, and then a lot of times, there's, you know, been animals that they thought went extinct that they've started seeing again because these trail cameras and stuff are starting to pick all this up too. Yeah, yeah, so. I agree. I agree. Well, listen, Ed, thank you so much. I'll let you go, and I'll have those two people text you and set up a time. Um, you know, to do a sketch. And did you put those, those reports you're talking about for Pendleton? Did you put them on the one that's on like the statewide reports or anything like that? Um, those reports are. I'll tell you, if you go to the YouTube channel and you go through, uh, type in go to my YouTube channel and type in Henry County, and you'll see that it's actually got Henry County in the name, and one is Lynette. Saw it out her back window. She was on Finding Bigfoot, actually. She actually went on Finding Bigfoot. I gave them her as a witness. She's on Finding Bigfoot, one of the episodes. And then Bruce, he saw it within, oh, gosh, less than an hour after Lynette, Lynette saw it, he saw it. And they don't know each other. You know, totally separate reports. They had no idea. They saw the same Bigfoot in the same night within a mile. You can track it where, the, where it went. The next morning, it was actually Tom Shea got it. A mother and daughter were right there by Lake Jericho. There's a little, I can think of the, the, the bridge it was on. They were going over this little bridge at the bottom of Lake Jericho, and they saw Bigfoot run right in front of them. And it, we think it's the same Bigfoot because it was the next morning 
all yeah. this happened. All this happened within twelve hours. Yeah. Yeah. See, I've been over to the, you go on that one little road instead of turning into Lake Jericho, whatever you go. Well, it's actually the road to go back to Lake Jericho. I think it is. Because you go around that one part, you can pull off there. They got the little spillway below the dam. And I've actually went up that hill, actually walked up the dam before and went up there to the, you know, where you're at the very top of the dam at Lake Jericho. And you don't think about it, doesn't look at high up. And you get up high up and you can see a lot around there. We, um, and, I'll tell you something else. Below that, if you look at a map, below that, south of Lake Jericho, right where it's almost like a creek either goes into it or out of it, the very bottom there, there's a little road, a little concrete bridge. Me and a friend, we did a night investigation. We pulled off there, right where the mother and daughter saw it. And we pulled off and we went down below that bridge and we were sitting there filming or doing some tree knocks or something. And I remember a huge rock went kaboosh in the water on the other side of the bridge like a bowling ball. Something threw like a bowling ball into the water and we're like, holy crap. I remember both both of us commenting on it. Like, that was big. <laughs> whatever, whatever was thrown was big. Um, yeah, and you can tell the difference between like a fish jumping out of water and then you, oh, you hear the fish in with break the yeah. water before it I, Yeah, I fished my entire life. This was a kaboosh like you can hear the the weight of it, and almost like you hear it hit the bottom of the, the lake. It was just like a bowling ball. Somebody throwing a bowling ball in the water and it scared the daylights out of us. Well, I know. I, mean, I remember there was, I remember there was one from over around. Well, it was Taylorsville Lake. The guy was talking about having rocks thrown at him that actually had pieces of moss on it. So you know they pull out of the hillside somewhere. Yeah. So. You know, he yep. said he had chucked one back, but it was a smaller rock. But he said what came back to him was like way bigger and had moss on it and everything <laughs> like that. Yeah, it, you know, it's kind of to go then when you start having rocks like it come to you, but they're not hitting you, so it's well, kind of a, a warning. Yeah, it's a warning. We got friends. I won't. I'll, I'll just tell you this. I'll let you go. In Wisconsin, there's a bridge. It's famous for these Bigfoot sightings, and this researchers will go up there to this bridge and get up on the bridge. And something would throw rocks at them back, and it would throw it back to them, and they would write numbers on the rocks, you know, and the rock would come back to them, and, and then they took their thermal imager, and when the rocks would come back, they would turn their thermal on and see the rocks were hot compared to everything else. So something yeah. was holding those rocks in, in its hand because the rocks were hotter than the other rocks. So they could tell right yeah. away what rock was thrown. It's, it's it was pretty, retaining heat, whatever had been holding it. Right. You could see it under the thermal, they said. So it's a pretty neat experience. But I'll let you go. I... All right. Thanks, Charlie. All right. Thank you, Ed. All right. Good night. Bye. Bye.